on the use of supplemental melatonin, um, particularly as, as in an aging population. In an aging facility? Did in an say? aging population, just in, yeah. in general, yeah. yeah. It's my personal opinion that that would be a very good idea in the sense that aging is associated with a lot of sickness and disease. I'll give you an example. Alzheimer's disease costs the economy of the United States about 250 billion, not million, billion dollars a year in healthcare. Imagine if we could delay that the onset or the severity of that disease by two years, that'd be $500 billion. And there are many, many, many diseases that are very expensive and most of them are in the elderly. And if we can delay these diseases, first of all, you improve the quality of life of the individuals, if you can prevent the disease, reduce their duration of sickness and they may actually die of old age. I always talk about that. When I die, I want to die of old age. And they say, well, what did he die from? He died of nothing. What do you mean he died of nothing? He just died right there. See, on the floor he is. He's dead, but he has nothing. Yeah. And, and, and obviously, I'm, I'm saying that facetiously, but it's my opinion that uh, you're right. There are some people who say we don't know the long-term effects. We live our life with melatonin. <laughs> if it was bad for us, in fact, it's the loss of melatonin in advanced age that seems to be the problem, or a problem, not necessarily the problem. So, like I say, I've been, t I'll give you another example. Melatonin is becoming very, very, very common supplement. In 2021, in the United States, the amount of money spent on melatonin, listen to this carefully, the amount of money spent on melatonin in 2021 was $1.1 billion. That was a 180% increase since 2018. It's estimated that by 2025, that may even double. Many, 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 many people are taking melatonin. And if it was bad for us, I guess people would be dying like flies, as the expression goes. I don't know if you have that expression in Australia, but at any rate, I don't know of anyone who's ever died of melatonin. Many people have died of prescription drugs. Every year in the United States, 32,000 people die from the misuse of prescription drugs. Aspirin, aspirin kills 10,000 people a year worldwide because of gastric ulcers and the associated hemorrhage. Nobody says a word about 10,000 people dying of aspirin. Everybody takes aspirin. It's not safe. I mean, I take aspirin, obviously, when I have to. Ibuprofen destroys your liver and kidneys. No, it mentions things like that, but when it comes to melatonin, for some reason, there are individuals who think, oh, that's absolutely taboo, absolutely taboo. I don't see it. I really do not see it. You can't kill an animal. You can't overdose. Mm. You can't give enough melatonin to an animal to discourage him. Even you give him a massive dose of melatonin, he looks at you. Is that your best shot? <laughs> Again, I don't want you saying that melatonin is safe under every circumstance, that everybody should take it, but it is seemingly a good, wholesome molecule. And you eat every day. If you eat any food at all, you're eating some melatonin. Yeah. I don't think it's going to kill us. I really don't. And I don't, the long-term effects, like I say, I, I know people who are diabetics. Diabetics have atherosclerosis. That's a very high free radical-related disease. And melanoma is a super antioxidant. I take a gram 
a thousand milligrams every day, and they have for many, many years to reduce atherosclerosis, you know, uh, blindness, loss of toes, nerve degeneration, all consequences of, of diabetes. That's a disease uh, severe. And if you can delay, defer, prevent any of the effects with, even if you take insulin, your hyperglycemia still fluctuating and so forth. It's just a terrible, terrible disease. So, <sighs> safer than water. People drown to water. Yeah. A lot of people drown every year of water. Uh, what are we going to get rid of water? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it, it, it just, I, again, uh, you know, I believe in prescription medications. In some cases, they're absolutely important. But I will give you one example. If you have cancer, one of the common drugs is called doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is a good anti-cancer agent. The problem is it's selectively taken up by mitochondria and your heart has a lot of mitochondria. And after you're on doxorubicin therapy, you may cure your cancer, but your heart is totally destroyed and the heart does not degenerate and you die of heart failure. Well, you lived five years longer, but you die of heart failure. You die because of the doxorubicin toxicity to your heart. Quality of life is everything. Uh, there are drugs in the United States that uh, prescription drugs to s delay aging. And when you check the details, they are delaying aging by three months. I mean, death by three months. Well, if you're, when you're 75 years old, three months is not, but, but they push them very hard. The, the desire to live longer, take this drug. They don't talk about the quality of life. But you live longer, and they don't tell you. It make it, they make it sound like you live 20 years longer, and you're vital, and so forth. Not the case. These drugs are very, very toxic. Melatonin is good. Not perfect. Melatonin is good. And I, I certainly am going to live the rest of my life with melatonin. And virtually everybody, my neighbors, my friends, my fellow scientists, almost all of them take melatonin.